Hey guys, this is Mark from zcardguide.com and this episode of the carburetor guide is going to be on removing the air cleaner and the throttle linkage and then the carburetors themselves so we can clean and rebuild them. Um, but basically this is just going to be on actually removing them. The next episode will cover cleaning them. So again, the books that I'm going to be referencing here to show you guys how to do all this. Um, this is uh, more, this one, SU Carburetors Tuning Tips and Techniques, um, is more on the carburetors themselves. And um, we're not going to be using this book too much at this point. Uh, but the Haynes Manual here um, is the one that I recommend on my site for pretty much everything. And it has a pretty good uh, guide to removing stuff. Um, it doesn't talk a whole lot about removing the throttle linkage, which we're gonna, I'm going to try to decipher for you guys here. But uh, the links to these books will be in the description. Like, again, I would, I would highly recommend you buy both of these if you're interested in doing any kind of carburetor work because they, uh, they come in very handy. So back to the engine bay here. And uh, this part is pretty simple. All we're doing is just taking these uh, butterfly nuts and um, loosening them. I'm trying to do them kind of at the same point there. They shouldn't be on too tight. And if, uh, if they are, just when you get it back on, just remember that because it's just kind of annoying. It's not necessary to have these tight at all. Um, but what we're going to do is just get them pretty much completely off, and then you can slide this almost directly upwards. Uh, so there we go. Just try not to bang anything. And uh, I'm not following that rule. There we go. And just be careful the butterfly nuts don't fly out. Okay, so the best way to get these out is with a um, just a ratchet here, a half inch ratchet with like a three inch extension and then a regular size one, because then it fits in there pretty nice. Um, and then these are our 14 millimeter, and you're gonna be using the open face of the wrench because you can't usually fit that, uh, that around there. But uh, I'm gonna take this off. This you could take off with probably like a long socket or something, but this, this seems to work the best for me where it's not buttoned up against anything. going to loosen everything pretty good before I start completely removing any bolts. Yeah, you can pretty much tape up right here. Oops, going the wrong way. So I'm going to take these completely out. And actually, you probably don't really need to hold this up because this uh, big hose up here that connects to the, uh, the valve cover is usually pretty strong. In fact, mine completely holds it. So next we're, we're going to be removing all of the different hoses that are still connected um, and usually it makes sense to remove one end as opposed to the other just because it makes it easier when we want to put things back on. Um, for example, this one right here we want to remove at the actual float bowl. Um, this mine is missing a, a clamp there so I'm going to need to get a new one myself. But it just comes right on. Um, do the same for over here. Just get rid of it on the float bowl side. And then next, I would recommend that you uh, remove this hose next. Um, and I take it at this side off. Make sure you got a good grip on it before pulling that line. Just didn't want it to come flying off there. Uh, yeah, and then you're pretty much good except for that one line that we left there. That. Uh, connects there and mine wasn't even clamped because I was just working with this but just slide that one off and uh, that's it for the air cleaner 
All right, next we're going to be removing this, uh, this hose here, mainly just so it's not in our way. And you can take that hose just right off. And uh, next we're going to be taking our springs here. So I'm actually going to be hanging these springs in this little hole here uh, just because I like to always kind of keep everything if I, if I can, like right where I found it. Even though that's not the exact same, it was hanging off of this thing. That way, when we go back, there's no question of where exactly anything came from. And, uh, yeah. Uh, next, you're going to remove this ball joint here. I don't know if you can do this by hand or not. Yes, you can. And again, remove the bottom just so you can leave, leave it uh, hanging off of the top there. And next we're going to be using a pair of needle nose pliers to remove this guy right here. It's kind of an awkward position. It doesn't fly away and there's also a little washer here so grab that too and set it next to that uh, ooh, yeah set it next to that thing and then this will slide right out just a bit okay and again make sure you do not lose these guys and Next, I would say to grab a, uh, a short screwdriver to, to uh, remove the choke here. So actually, I'm going to be taking this completely out. Now that's free. You also need to remove these choke lines. I'm actually coming back and doing this at a later point in the repair, so that's why they're all kind of seem like they're about to fall off, these two carburetors. But um, I'm going to put that a little bit earlier in the video just so you guys know that you should re be removing these choke cables now when they're a little more stable. Once these are loose enough, you can just pull that right out of there. You may need to do this, which is just straightening out the cable. As always, same for the left side. And straight up. This one's going to be a little bit more. And then actually take these guys right off here.
Make sure you're putting these screws back just so you don't uh, potentially lose them. So next we're going to be removing these fuel lines and I'm going to recommend that you remove them from this end here, the engine side of them. It's just a little bit easier to pull them off. <coughs> So just get them just about as loose as you can. And it's probably gonna be stuck into the rubber hose a little bit. So just once you get it loose, kind of go to the bottom and push them free or try to rotate them up. This one needs to be loosened a little bit more. Yeah, so now it's it just pushes up and it's free and just slide it off there. Um, and there might still be some gas in these lines, I would imagine. Yep, I never hurt anybody. And then we're gonna be doing the same over here. There we go. So next we're gonna be removing the actual um, nuts that hold on the carburetor itself. So that's uh, these guys right here. And uh, some of them are a lot more difficult to get to than others, but uh, just start out by loosening all of them. It's a uh, it's a 12 millimeter, and you're going to need just a regular wrench. Don't even worry about grabbing a ratcheting one because you can't fit that in there. So next we're going to be removing these things kind of up and off here. Um, just be uh, be mindful that you set up an area where you can set these down because you don't want to figure that out after you've picked them up and push them together so you don't lose the linkage. If you lost a gasket or this big thing over here, make sure you just put it back because we're not gonna be doing anything with these. And uh, it's probably unlikely that, these will come, probably come off, but it's probably unlikely that one of these will come off. You may want to replace them if they're in bad shape and I'll leave a link um, for those products in the description if you do wanna purchase new ones. And these are at a point where we can now inspect them and, uh, and actually work on them and figure out, you know, if there is anything wrong with them, what exactly it is and what we need to, to fix. Uh, the next step, we're going to be um, rebuilding these and cleaning them with the, uh, the help of a, a rebuild kit. Um, so yeah, move on to the next video if that's what, uh, what you're looking to do.